Welcome everyone to this evening service on the Sunday that falls between Ascension Day and the Feast of Pentecost. As we celebrate Christ's resurrection from the dead and his ascension into heaven, we pray now for a fresh outpouring of the gifts of the Spirit to bring healing and renewal to our world, to the church, to the communities to which we belong, and not least to ourselves. Some words from this evening's psalm. O clap your hands together, all ye people. O sing unto God with the voice of melody.
reading from the letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here ends the reading.
I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that you may know what is the hope which God has called you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The brilliant Northern Irish folk musician, Foy Vance, expresses a harsh truth in his song, The Two Shades of Hope. If there's one thing I know, it is the two shades of hope. One the enlightened soul, and one is more like a hangman's rope. Well, it's true you may reap what you sow, but not that despair is the all-time low. Hope deals the hardest blows. Hope. This seems a rather precarious word in our world, among the most insecure of words I can imagine, ready to crumble at the slightest friction. A word which, when it fails us, is perhaps the greatest cause of despair, dealing the hardest blows of this world against our frail and tired souls. Hope seems a feeble foe against grief, powerless at times in the midst of our world's oppression. Blind optimism in the face of pandemics and wars and climate change. Or perhaps hope seems just plain naive when our minds are jaded with such cynicism toward the people who surround us, the same people who are meant to be the objects of our love. The disciples may be thought in similar ways about hope. When at the, what we call the ascension, the hope of the world, the one they left everything to follow, was saying his goodbye for the second time. They thought they lost their hope once already, as he was taken from them and executed as a common criminal. Now they have him back through the mystery of the resurrection, and he is walking away, leaving. Jesus is the lived expression of God's life in the world, the love of God translated into human existence. He is what perfect divine love looks like when lived out on the human stage. So why do we celebrate this perfect, self-giving, generous love, leaving? How in a world which so often seems to so many, perhaps to all of us at times, to be God-forsaken, are we meant to celebrate Emmanuel, God with us, taking leave from us? At the heart of the Christian story is that God comes to us in Jesus, and Jesus sees every part of us. He takes on, assumes, the whole of our humanity, and every part of us is welcomed into God's love. Every aspect of being human, of being a creature, is redeemed, filled with hope even, as it is filled with Christ. But this great work of love, God's entering into our human life, is not a one-act drama. God moving toward us, it is also us moving toward God. From cradle to grave, Christ delved down to the deepest reaches of our human experience. He has heard and he has known the depths of human cries, the cries of the oppressed and the outcast, of the poor and the destitute, the cries of victims of senseless violence. Indeed, he himself became the victim of senseless violence. Christ has seen it all, and is more in tune with the broken condition of our humanity than we in our indifference and our self-centeredness ever could be. He has known the darkness of our frailty and despair, the hopelessness 
of this world far more than we do. And yet in the ascension to the Father, he leaves none of it behind. So that the ascension, the departure of Christ, from the depths of humility to the heights of glory, as our reading in Ephesians has it, above all authority and power. Is not God escaping or retreating from our life and world? It is a transformation of that life and world. One of us, wearing earthy, wound-bearing flesh, now reigns enthroned in divinity. Our human home is now the warm embrace of God. And in the midst of a world that seems to be without hope, the ascension is hope fulfilled. Jesus enters embodied, earthy, wounds and all, into the Father's glory. And there is no greater hope, no greater love than this. And in Christ, the crushing blow of this hope, that blow of death, has already been defeated. And this hope to which we are called is not a fuzzy feeling of comfort and ease in the midst of a broken world. It is a calling to become the gift of hope to a broken world. This means that just as God's love is so indiscriminately gifted to the whole of the world, so must our love be gifted. It means we begin to see the world anew and greet what and whom we see with the love of Christ, that hope that knows no boundaries. Most of you will know that this is my last Sunday at Merton, and the last sermon I will give you. And as I leave this community that I love dearly, the prayer offered for the church at Ephesus is the prayer I offer for each of you. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. And the hope to which Christ has called you is the hope the world finds in you. For you are Christ's body, the fullness of him who fills all in all.
Let us pray. God is gone up with a triumphant shout. Let us give thanks to God for the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he has gone to prepare a place for us in his Father's house, that he has ascended in order to be present at all times and in all places through the Holy Spirit. And so let us pray for Christian people throughout the world, that we may experience renewal and new life and commit ourselves afresh to acts of love and service. God, our Shepherd, give the Church a new vision and a new charity, new wisdom and fresh understanding, the revival of her brightness and the renewal of her unity, that the eternal message of your Son may be hailed as the good news of this and every age, through him who makes all things new, Jesus Christ our Lord. St Paul writes, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. Let us give thanks for all those who support us in our daily lives. Today we pray in particular for Jared and his family as they prepare to leave Oxford and move to a new life in Massachusetts. We give thanks for Jared's ministry among us, for those whose lives have been enriched by it, for all whom he has encouraged, comforted and helped to grow. As we pray for him and those to whom he will minister in the future, we ask that God's wisdom, compassion and love may be his constant companion and that he may continue to be a blessing to others. Almighty God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Grant to Jared and to us all purity of heart and strength of purpose, that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will, no weakness from doing it, but that in your light we may see light clearly, and in your service find our perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The psalmist sings, God, which is very highly exalted, doth defend the earth as with a shield. Let us hold before God in love and prayer the people and situations on our hearts this evening, praying particularly for those who continue to suffer as a result of the coronavirus. And let us pray for the life of the college, for our finalists preparing for and sitting exams, for Mertonians throughout the world, and for all with whom we share our lives. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Now let us pray together in the words Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As many of you will know, this is Jared's last Sunday with us as Associate Chaplain. 
So please do join him and me for a virtual drink after the service. You can find details of how to join in the most recent chapel email. Christ, our ascended King, pour upon you the abundance of his gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. <laughs> 